And you are with Morning Report. And this morning, another one of our election specials, an extended interview with one of the major political players this morning. Winston Peters is with me for 25 minutes in the Auckland studio. Now, you can listen as normal on the radio, of course, but you can also watch this on our Facebook page, live stream there, and video also on YouTube and Freeview Channel 50. Well, good morning to you, Mr. Peters. Good morning. Thanks for joining me. How's the campaign Which going? Should, we look, I look, <laughs> should I be looking at? <laughs> Just have the joy of looking at me, Mr. Peters. <laughs> How's the campaign? It's uh, pretty good. Can I start with a question um, from uh, one of our listeners? We asked um, people for some questions. Scott from Wellington says, in my view, you often speak in an oblique political manner. He, he says. I'm not sure why he thinks that. After all these years, I am unsure what you actually stand for. Can you tell us clearly, Scott asks, what you stand for and what your vision for New Zealand is? Yeah, Scott, but nothing so shallow or short that I can explain it in the next 25 minutes. I mean, I've been on the campaign trail for a long time. I've been in politics for a long time. I have a full manifesto. It has economic and social ramifications for what I hope is a great change to this country. And for me to be asked a question like that is not avoiding the question, but with what detail does he want me to answer him? Can you lay out your vision for him, possibly? Yeah, my vision in this campaign, the most brief way of describing it, uh, my vision is that we have a dramatic economic and therefore social change in this country after 33 years of an experiment which Labour and the National uh, Labour started, Nationals persisted with, and which they seek to tweak now after the election. A tweak won't do now. We have got too many things going wrong dramatically in too many areas, including our economic performance uh, against GDP, exporting's in decline, manufacturing's in decline, and we've got massive uh, immigration by way of consumption propping up our economy. I want a dramatic change, and that's what I'm campaigning for. You mentioned 33 years, which takes us back to, to 1984, which obviously was uh, a watershed year. Do you think New Zealand was a better country 33 years ago? Well, I'll put it this way. I know what you're saying, and it's a fair question to ask. But at the same time, a man called Hawke and his finance minister Keating were coming to power in Australia roughly about the same time. They went down the path of incremental change, building on their best past performance. We went down the pathway of an economic revolution. They've grown 32 to 40 percent greater in real terms than we have. Imagine if our economy was 40 percent greater than it is now. All these arguments about underfunding of nearly every area you know would not be happening. That's my point. Mm. But your point seems to be that you want, and you used the word radical, didn't you? You want a radical change to try to bring back some of that time. <laughs> now, um, yeah, but when uh, I use uh, the word radical, I don't mean this mindless economic experiment. No, no but it's a big tried. shift back, isn't it? And you used the word in a positive sense about the incremental change yes. that you saw under Hawke mm. and Keating. Yet you're talking about a radical shift backwards, aren't you? Well, if you're shifting from economic uh, lunacy or voodoo economics... That's as, what we've got now? Yes, you've got economic lunacy at the moment. Really? With, with unemployment under 5%? Well, you know, if one hour a week puts you on the employment register, then you're engaging in fiction for a start. What's five hour a week? Ten hours a week? Well, that's nothing. You know, you're now massively dependent upon the state for family support and for your own personal support. When I say radical, I mean this in this context. This experiment is not working. The concretization of wealth is in fewer and fewer hands. The wealthy are getting richer and richer, and the poor are getting poor and poorer, and now we've got people in the so-called middle class hard out against it, just uh, treading water. What I'm saying is I've seen other countries do far better than us, uh, and in Australia as an example, we might like to laugh at the Australians, but most jobs in, in New Zealand, Australia pay 25, 35% okay. more for. You've been in, in politics nearly 40 years. You've been part of three governments. You know, haven't you had a good shot? At, well, you were Minister of Maori Affairs in 1990. Well, no, 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 you were Treasurer in 96, and you were yeah, part I, of the Tarkovsky. I, I, know, the okay, so, I so, know the history as well as you do, probably much better. Let me tell you this. You've been part of three in, governments. In, so 90, why in you 1990, done about it? well, I'm just going to try and explain to you, Guy. If you'll just be kind and wait, because your leaders need to know, your listeners need to know. In 1990, when we came to power, I saw my party throw its manifesto in the rubbish bin and pull out a secret agenda. And inside the cabinet, I started on day one saying, this is a, is a betrayal of the New Zealand people. We've campaigned for the biggest majority in history, the biggest turnaround ever, and you're just betraying them. And I made these statements over and over again, and I got sacked. Now, with respect, 
How could I change other than to say it and alert my country to what was going on? So how come you've been sacked three times as a minister? No, excuse me, I didn't get sacked three times. Did you I did. Get... You never made it a full term. Can I term? explain to you why well... that's a statement? That's, that statement's a lie. Have you made it Can through I finish? A, f- a complete term as a Can minister? Can I finish? Well, I think you finished three times no, early. Look, see, you've made that statement now four times without giving me a chance to answer you. In 1996, I became the Treasurer Deputy Prime Minister of this country. We had a... Uh, an agreement over 60 pages, a coalition agreement which we said we'd stick to. And then Jenny Shipley rolled a Jim Bolger, remember, the then Prime Minister, and then she started in to try and change the uh, uh, coalition agreement we had by attacking the elderly people of this country, which she did on 1 October 1998, by taking super down to 60%, not 65 and by selling the Wellington Airport, for which she had no mandate whatsoever. Now, I got up on, in Cabinet the night before that and walked out and said, I am not going to go ahead and sign up to your betrayal of the commitments we made in the coalition agreement. She never sacked me. I walked out because I wasn't prepared to compromise and attack old people as well. OK. Fair enough. And we can go back And the third there. time, can I just say, well, I've, got a document, time, yeah. I've got a document in my bag downstairs that says what you just said is a, is a lie. Do you want to go it's and a get sta- it? No, I can, go and, I can go and get it. I'll ask my colleague to go and get it out of the back of the, the, the car right now. It's in the back folder. You know what it is. It's a letter from Helen Clark stating the circumstances. OK, so we, we might be able to come to that before, Wonderful. before, before the end. Thank you for by asking me. Now I've got three answers for you <laughs> I'm looking forward that to you have it. misled the I'm, public I'm, on for so, so I'm, long. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm going to enjoy this conversation. This is going to be fun. We've got another 20 minutes, so um, it's, going to, it's going to be good. I'm enjoying it also. Let, let's Thank move... God I bought that document. Yeah, that, that was lucky, wasn't it? I, I look forward to seeing it. Let's move forward and look at some of the big policies uh, that you've got because you, you've criticised Labor for not reduce, uh, not releasing the full ambit of its tax policy, right? You, you said the public need to know the full ambit of this tax policy that Labor is talking about. Well, can, we, I, can I say, I, I, what I asked was... Well, that's a direct quote from you, no, our I'm not, last I'm, conversation. I'm not denying it. I, I just asked to know what was, it, what, what was their tax policy. I mean, I don't know how we're having a massive controversy here because this is the nature of uh, pre-elections and Fair coalition. Okay. So let's right? talk about your own. I'm wondering, have you costed your own policies? Yes, I have. What do they cost? Well, my party's costs are out 30, 40 years in terms of some of these no, projects. No, no, well, over, over three years. Well, we think there's probably, uh, if you're talking about investment and borrowing, probably $10 billion in it. $10 billion over three years? No, no, much longer than that. You can't build a port. Okay, so, so, so on an a... annual or a... And, and can, most... I just, can, I, can I just clarify it? You can't build a port in Whangarei in the space of three years, but you can okay, begin so, it. So you're saying $10 billion over how long? Well, it's over about seven, eight years. Okay, so um, you, you're only really looking at, what, one and a half, two billion in extra spending a year minimum? No, I'm trying to look at what's being promised now by other parties. I've looked at what Labor's promising, 1.7 in health. I look at what they're promising in education. I don't agree with some of the things, but I look at the, the cost of okay, it. Okay, well, let's and look at some, cost yourself let's around have, that. And let's look at your policies. We want to spend the time on your policies, right? Well, that's what I'm here for, yes. Okay, let's look at GST um, off food. We, we, we've, spent, we've spent 10 minutes not getting to them, but never mind. We sp- you, you want to take GST off food? No, off basic food. There's oh. a huge difference, you see, of food... You get a huge bill off basic food. You're talking somewhere in the zone of about six to seven hundred million dollars. But it's a three billion dollar policy. It says that on no, no, your website. No, 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 no. It's a three billion dollar policy. Somebody costs us out the way they've costed it. But it's but, GST. But that's what it says on your website. No, no. Well, that no, is, it does. Well, it might say on the website. It should have been corrected. But I can tell you now. Oh come on. Well, excuse Come me. on, mate. No, no, what's it's, all, it's, a, it's How are voters well, just, supposed I've, well, to I've know told when you. they look at your website and well, they yeah. see it there? Well, and I admit it's, it's a wrong. mistake. In fact, I had a discussion with my team just about two days ago about correcting that because they said, is it on food? And I said, no, it's on basic food. I mean, food. This, is, this is laughable, isn't it? I mean, you're asking for full disclosure from Labor and criticising them and you can't well, even get you, your own numbers But I'm right. giving you full disclosure right now. Parties make mistakes, but in this case, it's been corrected. So, so, it so, been so what, what is the price of that then? It's not I three billion. It, I said it's been between six and seven hundred million dollars. Is the if you, is the take off of the GST off basic food? So you got it and wrong made by a factor speeches. of five. How's that? No, no, sorry, somebody in my team got it wrong. Okay, it. all, right. all it, my speeches is, say that. Is this right or not? Quote: Ensure that most of the food an average family puts in their supermarket trolley each week will be GST exempt most of the food an average family puts in their supermarket trolley each week. Basic food, yes. 
So, well, it says most of the food an average family well, puts no, in their I'll supermarket trolley. I'll say for the umpteenth time, basic food, and I said... If no, you, well, I'm if quoting you have your own policy. If you have difficulty understanding it, ask your grandmother, because usually your grandmother would know what basic means. OK, well, I'll ask you. So if I put a, a packet of chips or a packet of biscuits from the supermarket in my trolley, do I chips pay not, GST on it? Chips are not basic food. Ba biscuits? No, basic, biscuits aren't basic Bread. food. Bread? Yes, it is. So who decides what basic food is? We ask our grandmothers... Well, I'm we just, go out to the till and say what? Well, looks this pretty, is basic well, food and well, this isn't. Well, it'll be listed by people who are your everyday, ordinary people who understand common English. They know it's not luxuries. They know it's not this. It is essential. Right. And it's so who basics. draws up this list? Well, other part of countries around the world do no, that. Who, in your country? Well, in my country, I'd get a team together of people who are practically everyday New Zealanders, men and women, and we'll come up with a list of what basic means. But what you've got is... So is, how, how can you, how can can I, you figure can it's only say, 600 million and you don't say, even know what it includes? Well, because I got a, a couple of economists onto it on the on question of a basic set of food items, and they did the costing for me. Uh, they are seriously good at what they do. Uh, and um, they said to me... When did you do that? I did that about uh, three and a half years ago. So why um, did you only say there was a mistake on your website two days ago? Because I can't imagine, I can't understand how that mistake is there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 well, no, you can laugh about it, but you know, people make mistakes. Somebody gets the, the, the point in the wrong place. So do we take these policies on your <coughs> website before we go through them all? Do we take them seriously or not? Yes, of course you do. OK, thank you. Let's go to tax. You want to reduce the company tax rate to 25 cents. How much would that cost? The cost of that, down from what it is now, uh, is... Which is? Well, it's 28. Mm -hmm. So the cost is... Oh, sorry, I was a former treasurer. I've got a good idea Great. what I'm talking about. You'll be able to tell us what it costs. I've cost got somewhat more experience than you, Guy, but my point is, it's not so much a cost. I think it'll be an actual earner. The moment you do that, there'll be far greater injection to New Zealand business, more interest in, New Ze in investing in New Zealand business, and we'll turn it around pretty quickly. There'll, so be, a short, pay, there'll, pay, be, a, there'll be a short-term cost... But if, if, what you, is if, it? if you go there, if, hang on, if you go there from where the government is presently talking about tax uh, uh, reductions in private income, there'll not be a huge cost, possibly two and a half billion. Two and a half billion? Initially, yes. Over what time? Well, usually you do assessments of taxations over an annualised figure. OK, and then you so out. that's two and a half billion. You've told me that you were going to spend... Uh, your total impost was 10 billion right at the start, four or five minutes well, how ago. Far, how, you, how, how, long, how much more have you got to go now? Well, you, well how much... You, you've I've already got, spent no, two no, and a half billion, well, and we're, we're okay, only... OK, so you've got seven and a half left. Billion, that is. What else would you like to try and dispute here? Well, and I, become an amateur, uh, an amateur, so, amateur so treasurer. So you just spent two and a half billion so. dollars. In I didn't one just year. spend it. I didn't just spend it. I made a statement about it because I realised that New Zealand business is suffering okay. against Australia, and I also realised that New Zealand business can't pay the wages to make us a decent country anymore. Mm -hmm. And I understand that to pay wages, business need to be profitable. So we'll cut their taxation okay. to twenty five. And you're saying that's two and a half We'll cut bill. export tax, uh, taxation as well because we're not doing. Yeah. So how much? Well. So, so so you go to so you go to twenty percent for exporters. Yes. So that includes any company that is exporting anything. That's right. And what is the extra impost of that? Well, it's not an extra. Actually, if you grow the economy dramatically because people start adding value here, you get like Norway, you get like Singapore, you get like Ireland, a dramatic growth in your economy. You don't have a loser economy like you've got now, Mr. Mm -hmm. Esmer. You get the very <clears throat> reverse, and your ideas yeah, that you're uh, def defending now mm -hmm. have been tried for 33 years, and we are sliding down the OECD. It is you that have got the radically non-performing policy. I've got policy based on first world countries like Taiwan, yeah, okay. like Singapore, so, so you, like Norway, you, you like Ireland, that, there would be that an have initial... been enormously successful. You would acknowledge and that And I am be... not prepared just to, uh, to, uh, uh, so to advocate them. I'm prepared to do the best I can to make that a reality for New Zealand. You acknowledge that would, there would be an initial impost by reducing the company rate from 28 to 25. I'm asking you what... Well, there's always you, initial yes, impost, but how could... Thank you. So what is the initial impost around? of putting business tax, tax rates for exporters to 20%? What is it? Well, we'll never know that until we know, Mr. So you don't, no, you no, don't no, know. no, no, stop right there. You, no, 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 you, stop you there. Before know? you make yourself a self-appointed genius, can you stop right there? You do not know until you know the level of the take-up. That's axiomatic. But business will tell me very quickly how many of them intend be to go... pretty keen, I'd imagine. No, to go from being in, in, internal market... Uh, providers to external market okay. finance. And you may well find your turnaround is dramatically to the improvement of this economy, mm -hmm. like they found in, in countries like Singapore and Ireland. So you can't tell us? 
You can't tell us what it cost. Well, nobody can tell you, you what can't. the, okay, the, fair the take-up is. Let's go to S SOE policy. Quote, bring back the energy companies sold by the national government back into public ownership At and the put them back... Time under a single generating at the entity. Appropriate time, this yes. is from your website, yeah, right? How the, much does that cost? Well, you won't know that because it's at the appropriate time. Let me tell you what happened to New Zealand Railways. It was trading at $9.34, remember? And they fell to 28 cents. That was the appropriate time for the Labour Party to buy it okay, back. Okay, well, yeah, we're talking future. So you so cannot... Is this a, let, let, okay, well, we might be able to curtail but, but this part of it. But you get my point. If you're a market, if you're learning about the market, you know you pick the best and optimum time to make your move. Well, well no, because you And you've, that's in my policy. Okay, well, does it, does it matter? Because you've, quote, commit to buying back the shares at no greater price than paid by the first purchaser. Well, that's axiomatic, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it cannot hardly be, be appropriately a smart deal if you're buying higher than that they were sold in the okay, first place. Okay, so is this a first term commitment or not? How do you mean a first term commitment? Well, quite I, easy, I'm eh? you, three I, years and a term. Well, are you committing to do it? If the, first the appropriate term or time, not? now look, it's axiomatic. It's really logical, and you've got to actually follow this because words do mean things. If the appropriate time is in the second or third term, that's the appropriate okay, so time. So you don't, you're not, not not necessarily committing to that in the first term. Well, we didn't say so, did okay. we? Okay. On anyway, on why, do we have, why do we have to be so obstructive here? Uh, because here I am on, talking about our policy and you're sitting here like some sort of self-appointed auditor critiquing it when you know very little about My job is policy. to critique the policy. Well, 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 but, but if, you want to critique policy, policy... if you want to critique policy, first of all, get yourself qualified. Thank you. Which uh, you're not. Thank you. Sorry to say that. This close to the election. Who are the qualified people who have costed your policies? Ah, oh, well, people like Brian Jamison, who sat in a unique class of six, three of whom have become the treasurer of this country. He still works for me, has worked for me for some considerable time, a very fine economic mind. So he's on the New Zealand First staff list, is he? That's right. Is there anyone outside your party a host who's of other had people, a look at it? A host of Would other you be people. prepared to have them independently costed by someone else? To have them independently costed? Your, your policies? Well, I've had them costed by people I trust now. Who are they? Outside well, I, I, I just first. named one. But is there anyone outside your party who has done that? Well, of course we have other people. They write to us all the time. All sorts of people write to us. Economists engage with us. We write to economists, ask them how do they justify this statement. We find out the facts that they have behind them. OK, education, you want a universal living allowance, which is not subject to parent means testing for all full-time students. What does that cost us? Well, that's not in place yet. That is our long-term aspiration. The second thing is, of course, if you, if you moment you have mean, things means tested, then there's an enormous, an enormous disparity of fairness that goes so on. So, would you do that in the first term? No, we don't. No. Well, okay, I tell you well, what. I tell you what. I'm not doing the first term. I am seriously alarmed at the state of our present mm -hmm. economy. I think that some of the promises are being made now for implement, uh, imp implementation now simply don't stack up and it's frightening. OK, your student loan wipe, though, that is an immediate policy, isn't it? It is an immediate policy. Yeah. And what is that going to cost us? About 4.2 million. A billion, rather. Billion, Over, yeah. uh, 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 sorry, don't for you. Rush off the judgment. 4.2 billion time, depending on the speed of take-up, and that could be three, five, six years. So we've already spent... No, you haven't spent... Like no, 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 billion no, in this conversation. No, you haven't spent it, because these are... When you talk about 10 billion... Who do you think is going to take no, it no, up guy, immediately? Guy, please, please don't sit here like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I look, I'm trying to be helpful to you here. Yeah, thank you. But these are annualised figures quantified over a period of time of the first term. And if you make that judgment mm -hmm. that that's 4.2 over one year, you got it wrong. You make it over okay. two years, you got it wrong. Well, over six years, you might be getting well, it partially well, right. Well, Tracy Martin said it was 4.63 billion. No, I said it was. If I said it was 4.2... Yeah, so, you know, I mean... Well, uh, well, that depends on the take-up, but she might think... Uh, and she, fair, she, fair enough, 4.4, 4.6, 4.2, we're not too far out. It's the term, it's the speed of take-up. But you've said immediately, Mr Peters, on your website, immediately introduce a dollar-for-dollar well, dollar debt well, write-off. I'll, I'll, so, I'll take it through you very, very slowly. The person, remember, gets it paid off for years of work in New Zealand. They can't immediately compile five years of work into one year of work. So over five years, when they have done the five years' work, mm -hmm. over that five-year period, it will be written off. That is logical. It's axiomatic. What is your difficulty with mm -hmm. that? You talk in your policy about introducing uh, first-time buyers with long-term low interest rates. Yes. Are you going to do that? Of course we're going to do that. At, at, I've seen figures of 2%, but what is the figure that you're going to fix it at? Well... <laughs> Given the way the interest money internationally is going, uh, that figure may well be lower. 
We are in a perfect storm in terms of uh, interest rates uh, collapsing okay. around the world. And the forecast on your program this morning that was that interest rates might further fall. This will not be a difficulty. Okay, so you're going to, and this, this policy says for up to 25 years, but is, is that right? Well, of course it's right. Okay, so That's you... what this country once did before right. geniuses so... like you decide the economic revolution will turn this country upside down. We did that for decades when we became one of the highest property ownership countries in the world. Mm -hmm. It's your ideas that have destroyed people's hopes in this country, mm -hmm. and I think your ideas are preposterous, they're stupid, they're ridiculous. I'm not sure they're offering any ideas. I can't why you're standing around trying to argue about it. Okay. We did it for yet for decades when we didn't have bright university students running this country, just plain, plain mm -hmm. practical mm -hmm. men who built 74, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 44 years ago, in the, in the man and woman, okay. but 44 years ago we were building right, more homes yeah, then. Okay. Now we're building more homes then with 3 million that's people great. than we're building L now. Let's talk about your policy. So you were saying... So that, that is our okay. policy. Okay. So you're saying that you would fix that make common sense. Okay. So for a first home buyer, you would give them 25 years at 2% interest. No, no, it starts at 2% interest, just like it did in the old days. Okay, how much you see, does I, that you, cost you? You don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you, I'll tell you something. I, that's what I'm asking. I, I don't know law, what I'm I, talking I, about, excuse so me. I'm asking you. Well, okay, I'll what explain does it to you. If you just keep quiet, I'll explain it to you. Your start-off is a low percentage. As they did in the old days, they used to start at 3%. So who pays at, the interest? Excuse me, can I finish? Do you want to know or don't you? Yes. In the old days, they used to start at 3%, and as their income capacity became greater, the interest mm -hmm. rate would rise slowly. That's how, how it happened. People could get in for 5% by way of deposit and at no more than 25, maximum 30% of the weekly wage mm. to service so the mortgage, the rent, uh, sorry, the mortgage, the rates and the insurance. That's how it once happened. And I've got people who can build a house for $130. Thousand dollars, three bedroom, okay. good house so right now. Is there any cost on what it would cost you uh, as a government to pay the interest gap between your two percent and I don't know five six whatever the interest rate's going to be? What, well, is there what, any, any estimate on well, what that would cost well, you? Well, with great respect, what government in the moment in New Zealand is paying seven percent, six percent interest rate? No, the banks. No, no, the I banks are charging I, us. I, I, about. I just, I just. There you go, right there. You think we're going to, going to go on with the overseas Aussie banks dominating our credit arrangements. No, the New Zealand government will do this like it did when it was called state advances, like it did when it was called housing corporation before a certain mm. ilk of economic thinking came in and destroyed oh, this should, country. Should we bring in this document that your staff has got from the car? Yes, he's, please. he's brought one in from the boot of the car. Um, we did a, thank well, you very much. You, you wanted evidence that, about me being sacked the third time. This letter, this is to me from uh, the Prime Minister, 1 September 2008. This letter confirms the arrangements we made on Friday following your offer to stand aside from your portfolio responsibilities while the Serious Port Office makes its investigations. Investigations, I might add, which were found to be groundless. There it is, the Prime Minister of the time said, please don't go and tell people that I was sacked. I never was. Which is a nice segue into talking about... Mm. Can oh, I have it back? Oh, you can, actually. Can I have a copy? No, you can't. Oh. I just showed you the evidence. And so stop lying to the public. OK. I'll try to, to stop. Be very good, Guy, because you've known this for a long time, I've told you for a long time mm. that those statements are false, but you keep on repeating them. Mm. For In terms of uh, building partnerships, uh, again, with parties uh, after the election, you spelled out in 2005 your position, which I think you still hold to, which is this idea that there's a constitutional convention... Did I say you... that? I've heard you repeat that on, on your programmes. I never use the word constitutional convention. I just said there's a convention that in the first place you would go to the party with the highest votes. I never use the word okay. constitution. Mr. 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 Espinar, words matter. You're a trained man. Please stick to what I said. I thought I was untrained from 15 minutes ago in the conversation. Well, anyway. maybe just give me a further evidence. <laughs> I was right the first time. Maybe you were. Um, so is that still your position, that you talk first with the party that gets the most votes? Well, that would be the normal thing to do. But, of course, when you say talk, it depends who's better to talk to you. Mm. What is it you want? What I mean. What do you mean? What do you mean by a statement like that? Ten days out from it's the election. It's a question. What do you want? Well, would you define what do you what do you mean? What do I want? What do you want from like a government? song. What do you need? What do you want? What do you get? This You're is not start this is pathetic. <laughs> what do you mean? What do I want? I belong to a party. It's a democratic party, the third long, longest surviving party since. 1893, and we survive because we're a democratic party, and I, with my... No, 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 hear me out. 
I want to get this straight 10 days out from the election. My caucus colleagues and my board and my party is entitled to full consultation before somebody steps up like some dictator and says, I want this and I don't care what you guys want. Do you want. have bottom lines? No, you write them for me because I don't use the word bottom line. You don't have any bottom lines? No, no. You people write the word bottom line. I have never gone out talking about bottom lines. Have you? Ne so you don't have any bottom lines for the election? So but... you're, you're back saying it. I went on the Pike River. I said... I'm going to go in. If I can, I'm going to do my best to Sorry, get I'm you in. Sorry, I'm watching the clock. I want, to, yeah, I want to explain to you what happened. Do you have any uh, bottom lines? Can I explain to you what happened on Pike River with this well, expression? Well, you've got 20 seconds. Well, like, this expression first started with Pike River, and I said I'm going to do go my in. utmost to go back in. And here we are now for 10 days from the election, and every party wants to go back in. Was it a bottom line? No. But it was a commitment that everybody has now picked So no up. bottom lines? No, I didn't say that, because you're going to ask me how many have I got. <laughs> That's us at 8 o'clock news. Winston Peters, thanks for your time. RNZ News at 8. Good morning, I'm Nicola Wright. An immigration and human rights lawyer, Richard McLeod, says Immigration New Zealand must stop 